This meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners is being broadcast live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting was videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment uh, at the discussion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as items not on the official agenda. Uh, since there's nobody here, we probably don't need to say any of this, but we ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all pub public comment or ensuing discussion. There is no uh, cab representation tonight, uh, nor is there anybody not on the RMLD staff or board uh, in the room. Uh, so with that, uh, we will have John Stempeck be board secretary. Um, we do not have anybody attending who would be commenting, so we can we can go right on to um, the the first action item, which is well, first a, a brief report uh, on a couple of things, which may um, necessitate a quick vote tonight. Um, one of them is on the board vacancy. So. Uh, as you know, Bob Soley uh, resigned in September, on September 17th, and he also submitted his resignation to the town clerk. Um, since then, there's been no movement on appointing a replacement. Uh, I asked the town clerk uh, over the past week what the procedure is, um, because my understanding was that it was automatic, that it would get posted. Uh, she says, no, you need to vote as a board to ask for an appointment to be made. Um, I don't know that that's, and, and talking to her again last night, I'm not sure that that's quite right, because in the past, um, I'm told, uh, Jeannie looked it up, and uh, when Mary Ellen O'Neill uh, stepped down, the appointment process was, was just put in the papers, and we went ahead and okay. we got mm -hmm. uh, John here um, uh, as the replacement, and there was no board vote uh, on that. And then again, when Marcy West was elected to the Board of Selectmen, vacating her seat, um, again, there was a similar process uh, by which uh, David Mancuso was appointed, and again, there was no board vote to uh, ask for that. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that having been said, um, our understanding was that it would be automatic, um, but we, I've been told to do a vote, so I guess at this point, we'll, we'll follow the town clerk's instructions and um, ask for some discussion from the board on whether we want to do a vote to ask for an appointment or, or leave it to, uh, to uh, just go to the April election and struggle on with the four of us. So does anybody have any views on that? Yes, uh, so I, <coughs> my view, uh, we have uh, a candidate that was interested in uh, stepping forward in for the interim period. And um, so I think uh, you know, we still have several months uh, in the early mm -hmm. year to uh, utilize the services of the board members and since we're down one. So my, uh, my recommendation would be to go forward and. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any feelings about this? Well, I think that's I think that's a good recommendation. Okay, we'll <coughs> go forward with it, and and then uh, I think the uh, procedure is having a joint meeting of the uh, board of selectmen and the board of commissioners uh, in January, and uh, the individual the individual or individuals can present themselves at that time as, as we did. Right, and, right, and uh, yeah. and be voted in for the three or four month period of time before they have to run for. Election. And uh, my own feeling about it going into tonight was that given how late we are in the year, uh, it wouldn't, none of this process would happen until late December or January, and it would only be a couple of meetings, and the person would have to pull papers anyway at the same time and to be on the ballot. But um, I'll entertain a motion yeah. uh, on the question. I'll, I'll move what's, that what's, we. Uh, do you want to discuss your. Yeah, I, I'll just make the motion. Okay. I'll move that we um, ask the town clerk's office to post the uh, position and that we proceed forward with uh, appointing a, a new member. Okay. So, is that yeah. a motion? Okay. so then uh, all in favor of that? So I guess we have a unanimous uh, sense of yeah. board to ask right. for the appointment. Good. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, and apologies to anybody uh, or any delay that about this we, we understood from past precedent that it would happen automatically, and it did not, yeah. as it did in previous uh, occasions. Um, in other business, uh, just to uh, briefly report, um, uh, my hope is that, and maybe now that we're going to appoint somebody, this will this will have to happen. Um, that we can have a joint meeting with the board of selectmen and just uh, establish a good working relationship for the coming year. 
Um, last night at town meeting, I had a chance to briefly chat with the five members and uh, had a very nice chat and they were expressing um, happiness with Colleen's presentation at Tuesday at their meeting and thank you for that Colleen. Um, I think we also had a good report from Linfield and a lot of good things happening at the RMLD that the public is, is hearing about and we're glad that the selectmen are, are pleased with that and we certainly want a good relationship. So my hope is that we'll, we'll certainly we will have one now with the appointment process. Uh, but that even before that, we c that we can meet informally where we go to their board meetings or they come to ours. I think that's the way we should have such meetings um, is, is in the public forum. Um, and so that was my, th I guess that's my, it concludes my report. Um, at this point, we'll move on to, is there any, any comments on any of that? Sorry. No, sounds fine. Um, so now we're going to move on to the review of um, the general manager, and we'll turn this over to John, who is the chair of the general manager review committee. Thank you. Um, <coughs> um, just perhaps starting with a statement, uh, I think all the commissioners feel that uh, the general manager, uh, Colleen O'Brien, has done an outstanding job uh, this past year. Um, there's a long list of issues uh, that should have been addressed and programs that should have been initiated uh, prior to the hiring of Ms. O'Brien, but for whatever reason uh, fell through the cracks. These are now being resolved uh, and mechanisms put in place by the general manager to make the RMLD a professionally managed organization and a model, we think, for uh, municipal electric departments throughout Massachusetts. In light of this, and after discussion and evaluation, we would like to recommend two parts to the general manager's compensation. Uh, we use a, uh, a template we've used in the past. It's a multi-page document uh, that assigns various percentages in terms of how uh, the commissioners have felt the general manager has performed during the year, and then from that, uh, we use an equation then to uh, make suggestions in terms of both uh, salary and or other adjustments. Uh, and as a result of that uh, analysis, uh, we'd like to propose <coughs> that the uh, uh, salary be uh, increased by uh, 3%, and this is a CPI plus uh, 2%, which is at the high end of the range uh, for the salary increase itself. CPI index for this past year has been 1%, almost exactly 1.0%, believe it or not. Uh, so the 1 plus 2 equals a 3% salary increase, which would be uh, retroactive back to July 15th, 2014, <coughs> uh, which is um, the date within the general manager's contract. The second element uh, is a performance-based incentive payment uh, that we would like to recommend uh, that covers this past <coughs> year, 2013-14. That would be a percentage of the salary called out again. That uh, uh, for the general manager contract, this would be a one-time uh, payment, reflective of the significant <coughs> turnaround and all the positive uh, changes and processes that the general manager has implemented this uh, past year. Uh, it also encompasses the hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, saved in both attorney fees and in performing uh, work efforts internal to the RMLD that used to be outsourced on a routine basis. And so the percentage of that we would suggest on a one-time basis would be 6%. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to implement this um, in a motion format, if uh, so asked. If there's any uh, discussion. Um, um, yeah, but any discussion? No, I, I think no, John's summarized I think John it very well. I think uh, right. it's been a great, great performance in the past year, and uh, I think that has to be recognized and rewarded. Right. I and I think, uh, and I think John has spelled it out well, and I think he captured the sentiments of the, of the committee, of the subcommittee. I would agree. Um, so I, we can just move on. I will okay. entertain a motion. Um, I'd like to move that the uh, salary be adjusted for the general manager to a 3% salary increase retroactive to July 15th, 2014, and that a merit performance payment of 6% of salary be paid to the general manager uh, for the, this past year's uh, work, ex extraordinary work effort. Second. Do you make that retroactive to July? It, part of the motion was retroactive to July 15th, or what? Yes, yeah, so part of the motion was retroactive. Okay, to July Okay, I just I wasn't even sure I heard that. So I'll second that. Okay. Um, the, the the quick frame of reference for this is that the interim general manager was given a twenty-five thousand dollar one-time bonus, and I think this is actually um, this is less than that, and so I think there's right. ample 
precedent for uh, for giving um, mm -hmm. fully originally deserved yeah. uh, increase in uh, compensation. So thank mm -hmm. you for your work, and we look forward to uh, more good years ahead. Thank you. Yep. So all in all in favor? Um, yep. Yep. All opposed? Yeah. Board of Thank Colleen, you want to say anything? <laughs> mm -hmm. You would like to? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And with that, uh, we will now hear from the general manager. Okay. Um, you want to do the minutes? You want to do the minutes? Did I skip the minutes? Yeah, you skipped the minutes. I did not mean to skip the minutes. Um, I'll move that the April 24, 2014 minutes be accepted as presented. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? I actually owe Jeannie the uh, minutes from June. Someday I'll actually get to them. <laughs> she keeps sending them to me. She keeps sending them to me to remind me. <laughs> okay. Thanksgiving Day might be a good day to clean up. I do die. No, no. After I have too much turkey, I'll be sleeping. <laughs> Got a feeling May is the next one, right? <laughs> Just a guess. So now we move to the general manager. Thank you. Um, just a couple of topics. Uh, we had a nice kickoff meeting with the reliability and organizational study uh, consultants at the last commissioner's meeting. Uh, since then, um, the, both the reliability uh, company booth uh, has started interviewing and working with the engineers that have been out in the field and collecting data uh, and starting to prepare their deliverables. Um, the organizational study, Lidos has come in and done about 15 uh, interviews of employees. Uh, they will be conducting interviews with uh, the commissioners and was also extended to the cab members. That's going to be occurring on December 11th. Uh, I think it's uh, an excellent way to get everyone's input uh, from their perspective. Um, I'm very excited to see what, um, what their results are and compare them to um, both my roadmap, Jane's roadmap, Bob's roadmap, Hamid's roadmaps, so that we can have uh, purely independent review uh, for what's the best uh, solutions to, um, uh, as John stated, to have a professional organization moving forward and staying competitive and keeping some of the lowest rates in the state and the highest <coughs> reliability. So that uh, those projects are moving ahead on time and on budget. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention was the town presentations that are, <coughs> we, are, uh, we have Jane, myself, Hamid, and Brian Smith, and we've been highlighting, uh, uh, you know, the, the targeted areas for the organization reliability studies, so everybody's aware of uh, what was part of the scope of those RFPs. Uh, the tree trimming program, um, in which we're going out for a new tri tree trimming contract, we're extending the trim cut. Um, and we have also, Hamid has also posted on the website. Um, it's a little bit of a draft right now, but you can call it up under tree trimming and see exactly where we'll, where we'll be trimming. Uh, it's a map, and, you, and it's split out by the four towns, and you can see exactly where we're going to be. Um, so uh, that's moving along. The LED Street Pilot Program is completed. Um, the town of Reading is going to have an IE address that goes through the town as well as us. The other towns will probably have a um, Gmail account uh, where <coughs> any information, comments, uh, if anything is wrong with the street light, if it's pointing in the wrong direction, we can have uh, the customers uh, email us and we'll get those things adjusted. Uh, illumination levels, now is the time for the comments now that the pilot areas are done. Um, Jane spoke of the charging stations and the commercial rebates and other incentive programs that we're offering. So uh, we. We're at um, Linfield on Monday night. We were on at Reading Selectman on Tuesday night. On December 5th, I mean, on December 5th, we'll be in North Reading, and on December 15th, we'll be in Wilmington. And that will be, um, and we're looking to probably try to meet with the towns at least twice a year and give them updates on our projects, um, along with the normal budget process and, and other things that we do. So I think that'll be a good uh, level of communication, and everyone seems satisfied so far. Thank you. Okay, um, power supply report from Jane. Good evening, I'm here to report on the September purchase power summary. Uh, RMLD flows for September came in at 
8.9 million kilowatt hours, and that was approximately a 1% increase when we compare that to September of 2017. Our energy cost for the month uh, came in at 2.4 million, and that's equivalent to around 4 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, in September, the fuel charge was set at 4.5 cents, and RMLD sales totaled 61.1 million kilowatt hours. Um, as a result, RMLD overcollected by 317000 resulting in the deferred fuel cash reserve balance of $5.9 million. Um, just to note that that's typically a little higher than we normally have that. However, given the upcoming winter period um, and the um, constraint on natural gas, we anticipate um, going through a lot of that reserve money. And so rather than lowering it and then having to escalate it. We're trying to levelize it for our, our consumers um, so that the impact will be moderate at best. Um, so the, uh, the fuel charge has remained at four and a half cents um, and it's currently anticipated to go to five cents for December. Uh, on the spot market, we purchased 17% of our energy requirements from the ISO at an average cost of $38 per megawatt hour. Um, if we look at Capacity, our peak demand for September occurred on September 2nd at 150 megawatts. Um, and this compares to um, a peak demand of last year of 156 megawatts. The temperature differential, which is the leading driver for our peak demand, um, it was 95 degrees last September and was only 87 this, this so that would pretty much account for this uh, six megawatt decrease. On the capacity side, uh, we were required to maintain capacity of 208 megawatts and our total capacity dollars for the month of September were at 1.4 million, and that's equivalent to a little less than $7 per kilowatt month. Uh, if we look at table four, it shows both our capacity and our energy as well as the generation by resource. Um, the average cost for capacity and energy came in around 6.4 cents, um, and for the month of September, around 3.6% of our uh, resources were generated from hydro or, or renewable source. Um, table 5 looks at the four hydro projects where RMLD receives a renewable energy certificates per the PPA. Um, as of September, we, uh, the RMLD has banked or is anticipating to bank a little over 12,000 RECs, um, and that has an estimated market value of about 503,000. Um, we're actively marketing that. Marketing that. Um, once we receive any revenue for that, that goes against the fuel charge so that all of our customers receive the benefit of a reduced fuel charge uh, uh, from any sales of the renewable energy certificates. Uh, table six looks at transmission. Uh, for the month of September, uh, transmission costs came in at 1.1 million, and that's down about 9% when you compare that from August, and that's based on our monthly peak demand. Um, if we look at table seven B and eight, RMLD processed only one commercial lighting rebate in September, and that was for about 9.4 uh, $9,400. Uh, that was a lighting rebate that saved about 10 kilowatts on the capacity side and about 30 megawatt hours uh, annually on the um, energy side. On the residential side, we processed 156 residential appliance rebates for a little less than 8,000, and 19 residential customers had energy audits on our system. And that's my power supply. I have a question, unless anybody else has anything to say. Um, it's unrelated to your report, but um, the other day I, I saw the superintendent in, at town meeting, and we got to talking and about this topic of photovoltaics. Um, the Lincoln Sudbury School District is doing a PV canopy in its parking lot, and is claiming they're going to have a savings of two million dollars over 20 years. And I'm wondering. I realize that's a different utility. It's higher rates, so there's more to save. I'm just wondering, do the, do the various parts, uh, are they talking to each other? Is the superintendent talking to us? Or are we talking to the town? Um, do, do we have a common understanding of what's possible? Is this, po and basically, is it possible here? Yeah, we'd be uh, open to conversations. I know we're talking with Wilmington because they have a lot of new schools, um, and the CAB members have actively involved us in looking at photovoltaics. Uh, we're working with a commercial uh, customer in developing a parking canopy. Okay. Um, and again, that, that's set up through a PPA because, um, because we're a closed system, we don't allow third-party vendors to come in and sell electricity right. to our customers. Right. So there's options there where the, the, the 
the customer can purchase the solar to offset the use. Um, and then if capital is an issue, we can work with a third party developer to sell the power to us as part of our portfolio. Right. Um, and then uh, in, the, in the particular case where we're working with the canopy, the customer receives, you know, the solar, you know, the solar right. will go wherever it's, you know, most likely into the building, and then they have the shaded for the for the for the parking lot. Um, the the uh, superintendent said to me that he thought there was an issue with credits that weren't available anymore. That he was told by somebody at RMLD some years ago that there was some I in inadequate credits out there. I don't know what yeah, he was. Uh, the state recently came out with their. Um, Phase two for SREX, which is the Solar Energy Renewable Certificates, uh, those are considerably more valuable um, in order to um, incentivize the development because it becomes cost prohibitive. It's not really competitive, so the state has the SREC, and that just came out in April or May. Okay. Um, so it, it may be just you know the phase one right. versus the phase two. So I mean, obviously, the superintendent of schools is a very busy person with lots of things going on. I. From I sense from him, he would love to make this happen at the, at the Reading schools. Yeah, we just had a meeting. Uh, someone from my group just met with uh, Reading has a new director of their facilities, okay. um, and we were we had a meeting. Um, the individual in my group had a meeting with that in person last week to explain our peak demand reduction program, and Reading seemed very enthusiastic about the possibility of signing up and being able to reduce load and receive an economic payment for that. Right. Um, so we can reach out to her maybe as a starting point. I think I think I would, if I may, and I don't want to meddle, but it would be worthwhile to reach out directly to the superintendent because he specifically said he would like to do this and his, his impression from some prior conversation that he had with somebody or probably, I don't know what that was, was that it wasn't feasible for some reason. And I'm, I'm sure that it's, it's the kind of thing where a man in his position has a lot of things to worry about running the schools, yep. but would love to mm -hmm. hear from mm -hmm. RMLD saying, you know what, uh, this can be done, and, and kind of laying it out for him. Uh, if I was him, I'd certainly want to get that. So if, if, if you can, reach out to him and explain to him directly, right to, to, right to John. Be happy to. Thank you. And I assume the same, the same communication could, you know, we have a relatively new town manager, and I don't know how much, he, he also has a huge amount on his plate. Um, that whether he is knows all these things. Well, I, I think it could be the timing too, because I know last year, be, I mean, prior to Colleen coming, the town had um, a committee that was looking at buildings within the school system, and you know we didn't have Colleen here, so there was some question right. as to whether it was economical or not. So right. by all means, we'll definitely reach out. That's and, uh, good. That would be great, and I, I think yeah, it would be good, good for everybody. Yeah. Um, so that was my one mm -hmm. piece of feedback. Yep, we'll take care of that. Thank you. Um, I do have the street light rate. Oh, yep. yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm, keep um, going. As mm. part of the cost of service in the pilot LED street program, um, we are we are in need of filing a municipal LED rate. Um, and what that will do, it will capture the cost of the LED fixtures um, over the life of those uh, of those fixtures, which is estimated to be 25 years. Um, it includes the avoidance of the maintenance, which they last longer, they, we, don't, we won't have to go out there long um, as often to replace them. So we've developed an LED street light that would be available to the towns of Reading, Linfield, North Reading, and Wilmington. Um, there's four different fixture types currently being proposed. There's a 25 watt LED, 101 watt, a 90, 93 watt flood, and 134 watt flood. So this rate would be applicable to the towns um, on average, when you compare it to the existing rate that they pay for, which is the formula rate for the high pressure sodiums or the mercury vapors, um, depending on the type of fixtures, um, the town should be saving between 30 to 40 percent with the filing of this new rate. Right. Um, so what, we, that, what do you think that adds up to for, for the town? The um, towns? When we were at uh, Reading, we have the numbers. I, I think uh, Bob Lala Sheriff um, estimated that he pays about 200000 for his street light, uh, for his street light accounts, um, so it would be thirty to forty percent of that. Yeah. Hmm. That's significant. Yeah, yeah. It's that's great. Number. Teacher, it's a good number. Like that. That's great. Um, so the CAB requested that we get those preliminary numbers to them, so we will right. be providing yeah. to mm -hmm. the, to each CAB members for each town. Um, and this rate was presented to the CAB on Wednesday, and it was unanimously approved to, to be filed. Great. Um, do we need to? vote on this now yeah um, we should vote on this right before I forget um, that 
reach out to the school. You might want to have it be to the school committee as well, so that because I, I know that just from talk that I've heard in town that they're all interested in it and just put it out to all of them. Thank you. Um, so do we need a motion on yep. the? Yep. I'm ready whenever you are, Mr. Chairman. The street light rate. I'm ready whenever you are, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Move to the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the proposed. LED street light rates for the town of uh, Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield, and to file as such with the uh, with the state. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so are we on to um, Hamid? Hamid. Engineering and operations report. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Hello. Uh, the first page on my report, the capital improvements, you see the construction project and listed the new service, customer service connections for both commercial and residential. Uh, these are the activities that you see that will happen in the month of September. The second page uh, indicates the routine constructions, which we got in number of categories and they added up to, for the month of September, 475,329, and year-to-date was $543,551 total. These are all the capital projects that uh, were completed. Uh, and the special projects and capital purchases, we completed, as Colin mentioned, LED street light pilot program, 100% completed. Uh, for the month of September, it cost us uh, $1,335. Uh, SCADA system upgrade, I'm uh, glad to announce that the server is installed and the new software is uh, installed up and running. So that's the basics uh, for our new uh, automation system and uh, program that we have in place or the, the, for, for the roadmap for smart grid and uh, automation. Uh, under the maintenance program, we have developed uh, six programs, and all of these six programs, they're moving along, which they're, they play a major role in reliability, and uh, they're, they're very important. The age overload transformer replacement for Padmore transformer, single phase, three phase, we got single phase the approximately 11% replaced, uh, three phase approximately 6.5%. The overhead single phase 8%, 8.33%, the three phase approximately 2%, and this project is ongoing until we replace all the aged uh, transformers as were reported in previous uh, board meeting. The poll testing system-wide for the month of September, we have out of, out of, out of the 640 polls that they were slated to be inspected uh, for the year, the, the, the contract was completed, 435 that was inspected. I'm happy to announce that that program is all now completed, 100% completed. Mm. We had some uh, portion of the polls that were tested. Uh, they failed the test. There were about 22, 22 polls that they were condemned, and all of those, uh, they're re being replaced. Uh, uh, that's that's keeping an accident from from happening, exactly. right? Exactly. Wow, that's, that's great. That's a very important program that yeah. for both public safety and employee safety. Yeah. How many uh, polls? Taking that very seriously. Yes, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask you, uh, how old are those? How long have they been in the, the ground? The polls uh, they were they're ranging from anywhere from 30 to 40, 50 years. Wow. Some of them 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And they Mr. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, these all of these maintenance programs are new. Yeah. Um, the poll testing um, program, once we get the GIS, this will be collected in the, yeah. generally when you go out and you collect the data, you'll take and assess the polls and the age. And so once this is done, it'll, it'll keep going forward. But what I wanted to mention was there hadn't been a double poll tracking. You had sent me an email. Right, right. So Verizon is going <coughs> to a brand new software January 1st. So we're signed up and the way that works is because as we're replacing all these polls, in addition to all the polls that are out there that are double that we don't know of yet that we have to go out and collect, what happens is as the poll goes in, the transfer for electric, it goes to ball in our court. Then it goes to Comcast, it goes ball in their court. Then it goes to fire or Verizon, then fire. And then who's responsible for taking the butt out? They get the last ball in court and it comes out. And you'll get a nice spreadsheet. We'll be able to you know, have a real list of how many we have 
how many we're getting. And in, in I even mentioned to the selectmen that, you know, if we've made all the transformer and Comcast is holding them up, it's a great sheet to, to go forward in front of those selectmen and say, listen, you want to get rid of these double poles, you put a little pressure on Comcast right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they don't transfer quickly, but right. it's a much better way of accountability than we have right now. So we're moving to that January That's 1st. Right. But because of the amount of poles we're going to be replacing, because of the age and they're not passing the test, yep. it'll be adding to it. Great. His name of the program is N. Johns. N. J. U. N. S. That's a new, new Verizon. Yeah, new Verizon pole tracking system mm -hmm. that we already signed up for it. Um, other uh, teams are being uh, trained on that. So very it's a very good program. They used to, it used to be Inquest and Inquest. They, for some reason, the licensing, you know, they was uh, expired and then they moved to the new system. And it, it's a already working great. So, great. The double poles are unsightly, as you call them. It was, so yeah, it was. Just letting everyone right. know sure. that we're working right. on it. We're trying to get them out of there. Just right. to uh, fill in anybody who's watching, I got an email from Camille Anthony, who's a former uh, member of the Board of Selectmen in Reading, asking about unsightly double poles and what we were doing about them. So that's part of why we're discussing it tonight that's and that's we're that's responding to that. that. That's been a topic I've heard about on the 2020 over 28 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a new topic. We're finally doing something about <laughs> it. <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm glad well, to see we're actually well, yeah, doing a little bit better tracking. Exactly, actually <laughs> taking we're doing a little bit better tracking. And getting <laughs> the data and right. <laughs> dealing with it. I, I have a quick question. What, what happens? I'm sure it's never happened, but if a poll was to fail and hurt somebody and, and it turned out that the thing had been in there for 45 years and nobody knew, well, what's the liability for that? Um, I don't know. Yeah. That would be a circumstance. I mean, the wires are helping to hold it up. The, you know, when you have guy anchors and the guy anchors have to be um, properly sized, yeah. there'd be a number of reasons. Um, obviously, having a pole inspection program is really important right. to prevent that. Sure. Um, but I mean, is exactly there what would happen. You know, poles have fallen over in other communities, and thank God people haven't gotten hurt. Um, it would depend on I assume the legal that we're team. Liable. Yeah. Well, it would well, depend well, on the legal team yeah. for yeah. negligence yeah. or whatever. It would be case by case yeah, depending yeah. on. You would gotcha. And if someone drove into the pole, obviously, you know, that's a you would, different You would story. sue everybody in, in sight. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Maybe, yeah. Many people as you can can, you, you'd name in the suit. But we don't <laughs> suggest that. <laughs> you know, and also improve our engineering practices to right. find the software that you know we could calculate called Paul Foreman, which got this guy tension, guy calculations. Yep. So we guide the poles properly, um, you know, and, uh, any new constructions and old constructions, the areas that we spot that you know potentially could be troublesome. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're trying to stay ahead of it. So we, let's not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's okay. Say, I, right. I did not say any of that. It's just good that we have a, a program right. now. What mm -hmm. I was getting at was that uh, trying to just drive home why and what you're doing is so important. Um, okay, are we? Okay, we got uh, another program, very important program. is the quarterly inspections of our 13 8 KV, 35 KV feeders, and those are the listed feeders that you see that's being inspected. The reason we're doing them, we make sure that you know, everything is safe and sound. And uh, so far, everything, there were no problems uh, were found, found. We few lines in, in some areas that they were removed and, you know, clear from the line. The manhole inspection is going to get started in the winter. Uh, uh, we got also four cylinder cutout replacement that we, that's another program that we continuously uh, inspecting and replacing the four cylinder cutouts with the polymer type, which is much, much safer. Uh, also at the substations, that's a new program that we uh, uh, instituted and therefore uh, infrared scanning on a monthly basis of our assets at all substations. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to report that, you know, ever since we've done that, we found few spots, and but they're all taken care of and they're all fixed. And there are no more problems, no, nothing potentially that could cause any trouble. The substation maintenance program, I'm glad to announce that this program is almost coming to an end. We only got four more breakers to test, and that would make that 100% completed. As a result of that, we, we picked up few potential problems that they're, they're fixed, the last one being fixed next week, and that would put an end to the, this very important uh, maintenance program. And then the system re reliability, uh, we got the system average interruption duration I index that you see for the month of September up to September. 
of 18.86, which is well below the national and regional average. The system uh, average interruption frequency index also was 0.4, which is below the national and the regional average. The next page, customer average interruption duration index also was well below the regional and uh, national average. The, uh, it was 47.50, which is well below regional and national average. Uh, the next page, the pie chart that you see shows the list of the outages, the cause of the outages by type. And we had about 34% equipment failure, uh, trees 34%, uh, wildlife 21%, and the rest, as you can see, that you know well, the, from human errors, the unknowns, and the natural causes, the weather related issues that constitute 6% of those outages. And that concludes my report. If there are no questions, I would like to move on. I have some bids that I would like to get your permission to proceed. If there are no questions. You got the financial report? Yes. Uh, you, want uh, take, you want to take the bids or do the financial report? Do, do the bids. Oh, do the bids? Yeah. You do the bids. You do the bids and then Bob can come up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bids then Bob. Bids then Bob. <laughs> the best for last. <laughs> All right, the first bid is the SNC SCADA-made switches uh, that were sent out uh, to, uh, we, we, we wanted to purchase four of the, two of those and two switches. They cost $55,070. And uh, we received the bid from Wesco, Graybar, and Stuart Airby. And the successful bidder was uh, the Stuart C. Airb for a total cost of $55,070. So uh, I respectfully request to uh, vote on this bid to award it to Stuart Airb, if I may. Do a motion? For, uh, yeah. The only one to do the motion? Yeah, no problem. Moved at bid 2015-6 for S&C SCADA. Dash mate CX switch be awarded to Stuart C. Irby for a total cost of 55070 as the lowest qualified bid in the recommendation of the general manager. Second. All in favor? That's 4 0. No. Great. Thank you. The next one is the bid number 2015 08 that the single phase four mounted transformers. We had about, uh, we had. Uh, 66 of those. Uh, the bid uh, uh, was received uh, from Wesco, Power Sale Group, Stuart Irby, Gray Bar, and uh, if you could, uh, if mm, and the bid award is being uh, awarded to Power Sale Group for a total amount of 3,300 uh, for six of those units, five KVA, and the rest goes to Wesco for a total cost of. $75,880. I respectfully request to vote on this bid as well, if you may. Okay. Move that bid 2015 08 for single phase pad mounted transformers be awarded to Power Sales Group for a total cost of $3,300 and Wesco for a total cost of $75,880 as the lowest qualified bid in the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Second. All in favor? Boom. Motion carry 4 0. Thank you. The third one is bid the 2015 9 for three phase four mounted transformers uh, that we received the bid from Wesco and Power Sales Group. They were the, these bids were sent out to 17 uh, <coughs> suppliers and we just received the response back from Wesco and our sales group, uh, the successful bidder was uh, Wesco for a total cost of $79,096. I respectfully request to vote on this bid as well. Okay, many of you move that bid 2015 9 for three phase pad mounted transformers be awarded to Wesco for a total cost of $79,096 as the lowest qualified bid in the recommendation, general manager. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 4 0. 
Thank you so much. And the last one is BIT 2015 11 for 750 MCM cable uh, uh, that we will receive bid from Stuart Irby and Arthur Hell Company, Yale Electric, and Oconite Company. And the successful bidder was uh, the Arthur Hale Company for a total amount of uh, 139,590. Uh, the quantity is 9,900 feet. So I respectfully request to vote on this bid uh, as it awarded the bid to Arthur Haley Company as well. Okay. Move the bid 2015-11 for 750 uh, MCM cable be awarded to Arthur J. Hurley Company, Inc. for a total cost of 139590 as the lowest qualified bid in the recommendation of general manager. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to abstain because R. J. Hurley is a client of a client. Okay. So it probably puts two cents in my pocket, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> then we'll reduce it by two cents. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? Oh, abstain. Yes. Three, 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 three zero one. Three zero one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> That's nine thousand feet of cable for one hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. That's a good price. <laughs> what is this? This is 750 inch cable. It's really thick, about maybe very heavy, one and a half inch. Um, heavy to pull. Okay. Um, are we all set? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. presenting the uh, September financials, which represents the close of the first quarter for the period of July to September. So for the month of, uh, for the first two months of September, uh, for the month of September, the net income of positive change was $639,000, which increased our net income to about $3.5 million. We had budgeted at this point net income about $3.4 million, which resulted in net income being over budget by about $82,000 about two and a half percent. The actual year-to-date fuel revenues exceeded fuel expenses by 1.8 million. Now looking at page 11B, the revenue section, year-to-date operating revenues are under budget by about a million dollars at 3.7 percent. The actual operating revenues came in at 24.8 million compared to the budgeted amount of 25.8 million. Just to take a, 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 just a second here, uh, I'm still presenting the financials based on the budgets that were approved uh, back in the spring, which were the bundled rates. Uh, we're in the process now of, we obviously have unbundled our rates effective July 1. Uh, I'm hoping by the October financial statements, which we'll be presenting at the December uh, board meeting, to have the uh, unbundled rates on the revenue and the expense side of the, uh, of the power costs. And going forward, that, that's the way we'll operate. But through the first three months, kind of apples and oranges with the bundled versus unbundled, but we'll get that squared away, mm -hmm. hopefully, with the October financial presentation. Mm -hmm. Continuing on, on page 12A, the expenses. Year-to-date purchase power base expense was under budget by about $11,000, or a tenth of 1%. The actual purchase base power costs and the budgeted power base costs were at $7.9 million. The year-to-date operating maintenance expenses were combined under budget by about $400,000, or less than 11%. The actual O&M came in at $3.2 million, compared to the budgeted amount of $3.6 million. Depreciation expense and the voluntary payments to the four towns were on budget. Cash on page 9, the operating fund is a little over $11 million. Uh, the capital fund balance is at $5.3 million. The rate stab stabilization fund is at $6.7 million. Preferred fuel is at $5.9 million, and the Energy Conservation Fund is at $582,000. On the general information side, looking at page 5, year-to-date kilowatt hour sales were at $194 million, which is about 7.4 million kilowatt hours, or about 3.6% behind last year's actual figure. And lastly, on the budget variance side, cumulatively the five divisions are under budget by $405,000, or about 7.2 percent. May I ask a question? You certainly may. Can we go to page 11B so that in the event that the commissioners are looking at the financials 
in detail. If you go to 11B, you have 11B? Okay. No. So the actual year to date on residential um, obviously differs to the, to the budget, right, by a change of 51%. Bob can explain this, but the first column is unbundled. The second column is the budget. So what we need to do is put That's a big difference, an unbundled right? budget in there. So if you go down, you can see a new line item called purchase power capacity for um, $8 million that's in the unbundled but zero in the budget. So right now, unbundling everything, you know, just pulling out the line item is one thing, but unbundling it from each of the rate classes is taking a little bit longer. So okay. I just didn't want you to com be confused by that and because mm -hmm. when I looked at the percentages I was like right. holy moly. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the difference is we we've got it unbundled but the budget is still bundled and so by October we should be able to have those financial formats and I know some of the selectmen had that's asked fine. for it. Be December. Yeah. December I mean yeah. for October right. around right. financials. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. General discussion? None. I do hope this is our last Friday. I do hope this is our last Friday meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you said it was yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor? <laughs> well, listen, then I'd have to clean my bowling ball. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so um, I guess we're just discussing the next board meetings and the journey to executive session, is that yes, right? Yes, yeah. right. Okay, so our next uh, board meeting will be Thursday, December 11th, uh, in this room at 7.30, mm -hmm. and then Thursday, January 29th um, in 2015. And the Citizens Advisory Board meeting is Wednesday, November 15th, yep. and that's here? No, the one on September 17th. Okay. Uh, oh, right. Uh, November 19th has happened already. Yeah. I just noted that. Yes, and I, I, t I attended. I was liaison on that night. Okay. Um, with that, so we need a motion on going into yep. executive session? I'll move to we go into executive session based on Chapter 164, Section 47D, exemption from public records and open meeting requirements in certain instances to discuss mitigation and union negotiation and negotiations update and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Okay. All in favor, pull the board. We got, we got that right, Jeannie? Aye. Aye. Yeah. 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 Still it's still going to the first meeting. Yeah. Okay. So okay. what? Okay. The, um, 47 is the second. And 47 is the, okay. All right, so what, what should come out? We don't have to, so to discuss mediation and right. that should come out. Right. Okay, I, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Motion. Okay. So amended. Uh, second. Right. right. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Mr. Bassino, aye. Mr. Talbot, aye. John Snippeck, aye. Tom O'Rourke, aye. And with that, uh, we go into executive session. Yeah. Thank you very Thank you. much.